Good morning. So wonderful to have you all here today. Thank you for joining us. My name is Trisha Johnson, and I am the Director of Communications and Development here at the Ottawa Food Bank. Before we begin, I would like to start by acknowledging that the land on which we have gathered is the traditional, unceded territory of the Algonquin and Anishinaabe people. The Algonquin people have lived on this land since time immemorial, and we are extremely grateful to have the opportunity to be present in this territory today and every day. Here in Ottawa, our network of food banks see over 403,000 visits from community members every year. As we know, hunger does not exist in a silo. When someone turns to their community food bank, meal program, or food cupboard, it's an indication of a much larger issue, as, him, as hunger is a symptom of poverty. With that in mind, we are honored to have Food Banks Canada here to announce the launch of their Poverty Report Card, a first of its kind interactive toolkit which brings together a range of metrics that measure poverty at provincial, territorial, and national levels. To delve deeper into the Poverty Report Card, I'd now like to welcome Kirsten Beardsley, CEO of Food Banks Canada. Aujourd'hui, Banque Alimentaire Canada s'est réunie avec les dirigeants du réseau de banques alimentaires qui représentent plus de 4750 agences de soutien alimentaire et organismes communautaires d'un océan à l'autre pour lancer une toute nouvelle initiative de butin de pauvreté. Good morning. Today, Food Banks Canada has come together with leaders from the food bank sector who represent over 4,750 food support organizations and community agencies from coast to coast to coast to launch an all-new Poverty Report Cards initiative. This project has been developed to bring together an understanding of poverty reduction efforts happening across the country while highlighting just how far we have to go. We stand together on our shared mission to reduce food bank use by addressing its root causes and working towards our vision of a Canada where no one goes hungry. This report comes at a pivotal time. Across Canada, food bank visits continue to skyrocket. We are currently seeing the highest levels of food bank use in Canadian history. Food insecurity and poverty are also on the rise. Inflation and high housing costs have made things worse for, for people who are already struggling, while so many others are forced to go to a food bank for the first time. With so many people struggling, we must ask our different levels of government what they're doing to help. With an issue as complex as poverty, it can be a challenge to assess how effectively a government is addressing the problem. Additionally, comparing different governments to determine which ones are making a concerted effort to tackle the issue versus which ones are falling behind can be even more difficult. The reality is that solutions to poverty lie in multiple layers of government in Canada. Issues like expanding affordable housing, better supports for those living on the lowest incomes, indigenous reconciliation, better support for people with disabilities, progress on mental and physical health care, improvements to social services, and more. What's clear is that no pro one province or government can solve this crisis alone. Commitment from all levels of government is needed to tackle poverty and food insecurity. But why now? Well, today, poverty is a reality for at least 2.8 million Canadians and nearly 7 million people live with food insecurity. This dire situation has led to unprecedented numbers of food bank visits. Last March alone, there were 1.5 million visits to food banks across Canada in a single month, and that number has only continued to rise. Our country needs a collective and concerted effort from all levels of government to ensure that poverty growth not only slows down, but reverses course, so that we can get to a place where no one is forced to turn to a food bank to make ends meet. Aujourd'hui, il s'agit de contribuer à ce voyage collectif visant à éliminer la pauvreté avec une nouvelle énergie, un nouvel élan et une voie de suivre claire. Mais nous ne pouvons pas avancer si nous ne sommes pas en premier sur la même longueur d'onde. Avec ces bulletins de pauvreté, Banque Alimentaire Canada présente un outil interactif 
unique en son genre, qui rassemble en un seul endroit une gamme de paramètres et de mesures de la pauvreté au niveau provincial, territorial et national. Today is all about contributing to this collective journey to eliminate poverty with new energy, momentum and a clear path forward. But we cannot move forward if we're not first on the same page. With these poverty report cards, Food Banks Canada is introducing a first-of-its-kind interactive tool that brings together in one place a range of metrics and measures of poverty at a provincial, territorial and national level. These report cards will allow people from across the country to now see what their governments are doing or not doing to reduce poverty. They can see the grade their province has been given in poverty reduction and how it compares to other governments across Canada. To guide this experience, we've developed an interactive website where people can review the Canada Poverty Map, which shows an overview of how each province and territory and federal government are doing on carefully selected metrics. The website also includes in-depth report cards, breaking down the data and grades, and includes an explanation of the results to make the analysis clear and accessible. For our inaugural year, the governments have been graded based on how they compare with each other on real lived experience of poverty, statistical measurements of poverty, a standard of living, and government progress on passing anti-poverty legislation. As we continue in future years, we will update the progress of each government in an effort to encourage them all to work towards improving their scores by taking real action to reduce poverty. And perhaps most importantly, to hold governments to account when they fail to do so. Beyond the report cards themselves, we presented an in-depth analysis addressing the past, present, and future poverty reduction for each government. These analyses are capped off with realistic policy recommendations that can easily be enacted by each government and are designed with present-day realities of each government in mind. We're not just presenting a problem. And let me be clear, it is a significant and dire problem of everywhere across this country. But we're also providing real solutions for solving it. This is an offering to our colleagues in government, a path forward to a better future. With all of these tools in one place, meaning people in, with all of these tools in one place, we, meaning the people in Canada as well as our governments, can move ahead with a shared understanding of where we are and where we need to be going. Beyond consensus, we aim to encourage greater transparency, accountability, and enhance poverty alleviation efforts. And yes, there are two sides to this coin. One side is governments. These report cards and accompanying analysis will help their policymakers and decision makers to gauge their performance in the fight against poverty. It will also help them to determine how they can do better by identifying their strengths, weaknesses, and opportunities for future progress. The other side of the coin, of course, is the public. Understanding the extent of the assistance, or lack thereof, provided by their governments to individuals who are struggling with low incomes and poverty will encourage us all to hold our governments to account for poverty alleviation. This report is designed to be accessible to everyone, to offer insight into the precarity of life in poverty and the various poverty reduction initiatives and programs initiated by our governments. We hope that people will use this knowledge to participate in informed discussions and advocate for policies that can make tangible, a tangible difference in Canada and help build a country where no one goes hungry. So what did we learn in this year's inaugural report? We learned that virtually all levels of government in this country aren't doing enough. The results are clear. People are struggling and governments are not rising to the challenge. Overall, 7 out of 10 provinces received a final grade of D plus or worse. The federal government falls into the same category. This means that overwhelmingly, the vast majority of our governments are failing our most vulnerable neighbours, and without clear action, more people will be falling through the cracks. We were shocked to find that as, that as in many provinces, half the people or more feel worse off than they did last year. It's in times like this that strong government action is needed most of all, and yet our section on grading legislative progress found that half of governments were receiving a D or F grade. In other words, these governments are standing by and allowing poverty to worsen instead of helping a growing number of people struggling to make ends meet. And while we've heard governments tell low rates of poverty, we are seeing a different story unfold across the country. 
with food banks that visits and food insecurity rates skyrocketing, and over, over a quarter of our population living with an inadequate standard of living, we must ask ourselves, when will it be enough for our governments to recognize this for the emergency this is? As food bankers across the country roll up our sleeves to meet the growing demand, as we innovate to find new sources of healthy and culturally appropriate food, as we partner with community organizations to offer new programs to help people navigate out of poverty, as we meet too many, too many people and new clients crossing our thresholds, as we show up to do what we need to do for our neighbors in need, we ask governments to do the same. And these report cards give you a roadmap on how to do just that. These report cards demonstrate that poverty is not one measure of income. Instead, it is the accumulation of experiences, circumstances, and conditions that people living in Canada must face. Much like this crisis cannot be solved by one government alone, it cannot be solved by addressing one single issue alone. Whether it's social assistance rates, mental health services, affordable housing, or labor force support, each of these issues contribute to poverty and each needs strong and bold government action today. These landmark Canada-wide poverty report cards highlight deepening food insecurity and failures from all level of government while setting out an actionable and measurable poverty reduction roadmap going forward. These report cards can be used to help facilitate dialogue and a shared understanding of the road ahead. Poverty in Canada cannot be eradicated by one government alone. It will, will require a united effort, along with a new desire for change from people across the country. Et peut-être plus important encore, nous sommes ici aujourd'hui pour dire à tous les gouvernements du Canada de faire mieux. Ces bulletins servent de référence pour suivre vos progrès et nous demanderons désormais des comptes à tous les niveaux de gouvernement. J'espère sincèrement que les gouvernements accepteront cette offre et apporteront les changements courageux que, que nous savons sont possibles. Je ne veux pas penser à la prospérité et aux possibilités que nous nous, nous coûterons en tant que pays s'ils ne le font pas. Il est le temps d'agir. And perhaps most importantly, we are here today to tell all governments in Canada to do better. These report cards serve as a baseline to monitor your progress, and we will be holding all levels of government to account from now on. It is my sincere hope that governments will take this offering and make the courageous changes we know are possible. I do not want to think of what prosperity and what possibility we are costing ourselves as a country if they don't. The time to act is now. Merci and thank you. Happy to answer any questions.